Welcome back boys and girls, it's pajama time. We're back with another Geese series video. This one is a special shout out to one of our patrons, Jack, who requested to do some very nice bow and arrow chokes. Uh, I'm happy to show them. Matai, my buddy's helping me out. He's not so happy to be volunteering because uh, bow and arrows are pretty nasty. Let's get to it. Let's... Okay, so we're gonna start off in back control basically to, uh, to show the concept of the bow and arrow. Well, I'm also gonna show you an entry from side control later on, but for now, most people know it from bow and arrow, uh, from back control. So I have my C belt grip, yeah? Now, we have some other videos with chokes from the back, so I suggest you watch those before, because I'm showing you how to open lapel, how to work with different submissions with lapel chokes, etc. So the concept first is if I open this lapel, I also wanna fold it a little bit. So I get more space for my thumb to go in, get a deep bite, the deeper the better, yeah? I always calculate for the fact that I might lose a little bit of slack once I go for my submission, or he grabs my hand, tries to uh, peel it off. So I open up, fold it, and get my thumb and index finger all the way deep into his neck, yeah? So my grip should be deep. Now the bow and arrow was made also to compensate for the fact if you have a lower grip and you cannot finish with a normal choke, you're gonna A, B all the way out, get the angle to compensate for the fact that your grip is lower on his neck. That will make sense in a while. So first we're gonna assume we have a proper grip. We're gonna open, go deep, yeah? I hope you don't get the skin of your partner, but that's up to you. Uh -huh. <laughs> and control the position. Now a lot of people first, they dive towards the bow and arrow choke and the guy's already escaping. So I wanna keep him with me. I have this underhook, so I keep control. Yeah, I keep my elbow behind his neck because one of his basic escapes we're gonna show you in a sec is popping my elbow off. Now, here's what people tend to mess up. They throw this leg off and they throw the secondary leg over, which is good if Matein for now will stay uh, completely still. But as soon as I get this leg off, he's escaping my back control. And I could try and work for my bow and arrow, but he's long gone. So, I want you guys to focus on how this feet switch. Now, I have, uh, I have long legs, but Matein is pretty strong and uh, <laughs> muscular, so I'm, I'm not getting all the way. If you're not getting there, it's not that you're not limble, uh, nimble or flexible enough, you just have to A-B out a little bit. So you can see my hip getting out beside him. Now I open this leg up and this foot comes underneath and I'm still having a hook. So if he tries to pull his leg, there's still tension, 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 and then I get this hook tight behind his hip. So I walk this foot and keep flex on his hip. Yeah, so there's no moment of losing position. I open, flex, flex, work my way, and flex to his hip. So when he goes to his left, he's stuck with my foot. Now, second thing where people tend to mess up, they just grab the pants here. What I like to do, if you come closer, you can see the folds in his gi, look how beautiful. I grab the fold here, four fingers in, behind the crook of his knee. So usually if you want to be fast, you just grab the gi, but this, uh, kick a leg out, it's easier to break this grip than when I have the complete fold here. Yeah, there's so much fabric here. Yeah, so when he pulls the leg away, this is strong. Now, to finish off, my elbow, if he pops it off, that's a common escape for him. Boom, that's where he goes. So I get my elbow behind him, yeah, get my grip, and now you don't have to fall back in the bow and arrow. A lot of people tend to like fall and make a huge motion. I'll explain why in a second, but for now, if you have a proper grip and a good bow and arrow, you can finish from here, easy. That's, that's, yeah, you can just tap it or, or don't, yeah? So that's easy, you don't have to fall away. You just have to A, B out a little bit. If you cannot reach with the leg, control the pants so he doesn't run away, control the sleeve, uh, sorry, the collar, and just extend your elbow to the backside and start choking, <coughs> yeah? That's it. Now, why do we spin all the way? That's when we start to lose the grip, and that's when the bow and arrow becomes very efficient. If I have a tight grip, why would I bother to go for the bow and arrow if I can just finish off here? Boom, that's it, yeah? Or with the half Nelson choke we showed in previous video. So what happens is I have my grip, and my opponent starts to defend, or I don't get a high grip, and I slide down. And there's a lot of space here. Now, I can keep the back mount and try to work for a better grip, or I can go for my bow and arrow here. So there's too much space to finish him, and I compensate that by opening up, opening up, opening up, boom, and going to the angle. You can see the space going away once I go to the bow and arrow. Yes? Now, this is the basic bow and arrow. I compensate for the fact that I'm lacking space here by going all around his neck. That's it. Now, what's the fun in that? We're gonna be a little bit more mean. I love doing this bow and arrow, the next one, when using my secondary leg. So as soon as I spin, I throw this leg over, put it behind his leg. Uh, neck, sorry, <laughs> my leg behind his neck. Now, you don't have to be that flexible, yeah? Because this is just me laying on my back and playing a little bit guard, that's it. So I go over, now I extend my left hand and I kick this shin away to his head. So I kick that direction. Whilst pulling here, whilst extending, and I get a very tight <coughs> submission here, yeah? Beautiful, yes? 
Now, what's the, the benefit of putting my shin behind his head? Well, obviously my choke becomes tighter, but there's more. So as soon as I lose a little bit of slack here, I get some slack, I go over, I extend, I throw my leg over. Now, if for some miracle, he gets the grip off or I slip off his gi, I shoot through to an armbar here. Because my leg's already in position, it's, it's hardly a transition for me to switch from the bow and arrow to the armbar here, whilst my leg is already here. Now, those are my favorite variations of bow and arrow. I'm gonna do one more. This one is, uh, I've, I hadn't seen this one before until recently, like two weeks ago, we had a big competition and my coach fought in the black belt division and he finished someone beautifully with a bow and arrow choke using his primary leg. I have no idea how he did it because he's super flexible, I guess, but uh, we actually just did a video call with him asking him how he did it. So he got his hip all the way out, like here, and then he threw this leg behind his head like so. Turns out I'm flexible enough and then he extended, yeah? So I asked him about the benefits of using this leg instead of this leg. He said it can transfer more into the uh, triangles and it was just super gnarly, he said. So you A, B all the way out, you get this leg over. Now if I'm stuck underneath him, it's pretty hard. But if I A, B my butt out, then I'm flexible enough to go here, yeah? And he tends to mix it up maybe with triangle controls, etc. Beautiful variation on bow and arrow. And as promised, just real quick, like we showed with the half Nelson choke, if my body is on this side, go on your right side, please. Yeah, or let's do the left side for the camera. Nice. So if he's on the side, now in no gi, we like to work here with Kimura grips, with uh, gif wraps, et cetera, et cetera. But in the gi, we can grab this lapel once again. Now we've shown you previously how to do this half Nelson karate chop choke, et cetera. Now with the bow and arrow concept remains the same. Grab the collar, go into his pants. Now, my arm is preventing my leg from going over, so I'm kind of stuck here. So usually I keep control of his sleeve, I first step, then control his pants, and now I just fall back, go into the bow and arrow here. I don't even have to fall on my back, I can just extend here. That's it. So, bow and arrow chokes in the gi, very nice, well, at least for me. Uh, Jack, thank you for suggesting this one. Yeah, guys, be sure to check out Patreon. Uh, if you have any suggestions, drop them there or leave them here in the comments. Matijn, I'm so sorry I had to suffer this. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks See you in the next much. video. Yeah.